Caesar now possessed all the glory and power of a king, and it began to be believed that he wanted to be a king in reality. The Romans had not had a king for five hundred years and would not have one. Their feelings against kings was so strong that none of the men who had ruled Rome, at times with almost kingly power, had ever dared to call himself king. One day, an intimate friend of Caesar saluted him in public as king. Caesar replied, I am not king, but only Caesar. Some of the nobles, however, felt certain that he meant to make himself king, and they formed a plot to kill him in the Senate House on the Ides of March, that is, on the 15th of March. The Romans had certain days in their months which they called Calends, Nones, and Ides. One of the persons who made the plot against Caesar was Junius Brutus, a highly respected Roman. Brutus was an intimate friend of Caesar, but he thought that Caesar intended to destroy the Republic by making himself king, and therefore he joined the plot against him. As the Ides of March drew near, the plan for putting Caesar to death was carefully arranged and settled. An augur, or fortune teller, one day stopped Caesar in the street and said to him, Beware the Ides of March. But the great conqueror laughed at the warning. On the appointed day, the plotters met in the Senate chamber, ready to do the wicked deed they had planned. When Caesar entered the chamber, all present rose to greet him. He bowed and smiled pleasantly to the people, and took his usual seat. Now was the fatal moment. As had been arranged, one of the plotters went up to him with a request for the pardon of a prisoner. Then the rest crowded around his chair, as if to urge him to grant the request. Caesar seemed somewhat alarmed at the crowd and rose from his chair. At this moment he was stabbed in the side with a sword, and all was excitement and confusion. They stabbed him until he fell dead. Then they went out of the Senate and through the streets of Rome with Brutus at their head. They told the people what they had done and rejoiced at the deed. They said the death of Caesar saved the Roman Republic. But the people were very angry and threatened to put to death those who had killed Caesar. They would have done this only that Brutus and his friends fled from the city. There was a grand funeral service in honor of Caesar. The body was laid in the forum, and a famous Roman named Mark Anthony made an eloquent funeral speech over it. He praised Caesar and spoke so bitterly against Brutus and his party that the people were more angry than ever. This Mark Anthony was afterwards a very powerful man in Rome. Caesar died 44 years before Christ was born. Of course, his death did not save the Roman Republic. It had, indeed, already ceased to exist in all but the name. Rome was no longer a republic, but an empire, and, as we shall see, the family of Caesar gave it its first emperor. All the emperors adopted the name of Caesar as part of their title.